Hi friends, today I am painting one last um, uh, dagger brush painting that I thought I'd share with you. I'm going to be painting it on a card because I'm actually making a card for someone. So I thought I might as well um, paint it and do a little tutorial. So what I'm going to be painting today is these beautiful um, hydrangeas. And uh, I found I was able to paint them with this dagger brush. Here's another one I did, really pretty. Um, it takes a little bit of patience and mindfulness, I guess would be the best word, um, for me to use this brush for them. But um, they do a pretty good job creating these um, little petals. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I also wanted to share with you, I have two um, dagger brushes. I still got the plastic on there. Um, I have two dagger brushes and uh, they're both Princeton, but one of them is a Neptune which uh, they kind of sail as their um, best, it's the 4750 series, um, their nicest synthetic squirrel brush. And then I've also got this Princeton Umbria, uh, which is the one that I really, really love. The Neptune, I will tell you, is really, really soft. And it's kind of almost, to me, the, the word I use is floppy. And it does hold a ton of water. Um, for me, the type of painting I do, I don't care for it as much. I have to constantly dip it off and get rid of the excess water and then it doesn't have that spring that I like. I love this, uh, the Princeton Umbria, the number four, their dagger. They actually call it a dagger striper. It's really, if you can see, I don't know if you can see, but it bounces right back. It's much stiffer. It doesn't hold as much water. This one holds just a ton of water. And again, doesn't have that spring. Um, this one's a little bit thinner. I like the little bit thicker and shorter. I don't know, maybe it isn't shorter. Uh, it is bristles. So, you know, play with them. It's always up to you what you like best, but for me, I really like the Umbria. I did want to play a minute and just see because I didn't test them against each other as far as, um, let me just do something here. So this is the softer Neptune. I'm just going to make a line here. Of course, it, it starts running out of paint. So there you go, there's that, very, very soft. Now let's do the same with the Umbria and see what, what happens with that one. It's not gonna hold as much water, which for me is fine. And let's make that There you go. So it was able to, eventually it did move across the entire page. I just like the stiffness of it a lot. It just really resonates for me and my style of painting. So today I've been using um, the Neptune, but today I am going to use uh, the Umbria for these uh, hydrangeas that we're going to be doing. So as part of that tutorial kit I do, I will put one of these cards in there so you can see. They're really beautiful. They're a five by seven card. They come with a um, really pretty envelope that has this beautiful edge on it. Um, I love them. So I put that in there so that you can see the painting close up. Not sure which one I will put in there. Um, and then I'm going to do this page of um, brush strokes so you can see that. 
and I will also give you a little swatch page with the colors so you can look at the colors if you really liked these colors. Um, I will put in there, which is basically a turquoise. I think I had a little bit of Prussian blue and this violet purple. I might have even had just a tad bit of um, the Quinn Magenta that I love. So working on uh, the card, when I get to that point, this is the 140 pound, I share these a lot, cold press uh, card, and I buy them in boxfuls and I make cards for everybody. Whenever I need a card, I just make my own card. And uh, so we will be painting on that. And let's just start, because I think before you try to tackle using this for these brush strokes, practice it, because it's going to take some real um, kind of concentration to keep the tip in one spot, so you get this point, okay? One of the things, again, that I do love about the dagger is how you can get these really beautiful broad brush strokes um, that could be used as a wash as well. And you can also get, let me show you, the beautiful tip. So you can get this wide brush stroke. You could even do a wash. And at the same time, if you hold your brush this way versus sideways, look at this very, very, very delicate detail line you could get. So that's one of the things that you might really enjoy with your um, daggers. They also, you can point, put on its side, point, put on its side. So you can get that compound stroke. Uh, if you've watched my other tutorials on this brush, what they're to me, just excel at is creating um, leaves. They're amazing at creating leaves. So you have a stem and point, press, point, point, press, point. So they're really great. Point, press, point. So they make amazing leaves. You can even do a short leave, something like that. They're really worth playing with to see what you like. But today, again, we're going to be doing that um, petal. So I've got my two waters. I've got my water to wash and my water to rinse. Really, really important. Here's my water to wash in. And then I've got my uh, paper towel. Should get a new one so it doesn't have all that spots on it. And uh, let's go ahead and like I said, before you take this flower on, please, please do this warm up because this um, petal is a little bit, uh, it's not difficult by any means, but it, it can be, a tiny bit challenging, and I'll show you why. So the first thing you wanna do is practice creating these petals. And how I did that is I, let's just say this is the middle of your flower. You're pointing the brush towards the center of the flower. So you lay your brush down, and then keeping, this is where the mindfulness comes in. Keep the point of your brush there. Lay your brush down and turn your hand, okay? And then you can just kind of close in that little gap. It takes some practice, I will tell you that. Let me get a little bit more paint here. I'm gonna water it down just a tiny bit. So you are point, and then keeping the tip in the same spot, turning your brush like that, okay? Now this is kind of inexpensive paper, so if you don't like this line you're getting, just dab off that brush, fill it in, 
like that, get rid of that puddle. Okay, let's try it again. Point, lay it down, keeping the point of the brush in the bottom of the, the petal. There you go. Okay, and let's do it one more time to complete that fourth petal. And you know, even this, um, this uh, Umbria, it does hold a lot of water because you've got a lot of bristle in there. So it still holds a lot of water. Let me move my card out of the way here, but not anything like the Neptune. So point, lay your brush down, keep the point of the brush there and turn the top of the brush like that. And if you need to, you can go in and just move that paint around. So there you go. So let's practice some more of these. So this is the perfect little hydrangea petal. And then you're going to have half petals too, but keep practicing this one. So point, lay your brush down, keep the tip in the same spot, turn your brush, like that. And then you may have to, I found I had to kind of round out that edge. Let's do another one. Let me grab a little bit more paint. And making sure that, you know, you're getting rid of a little bit of that water so you don't get the puddles. So point, lay your brush down on its side, keep the point in the same spot and just turn your brush. Okay, so like I said, it takes some practice to get that muscle memory, but you can do it. Just practice a whole page of these. Let's do another one. Point, lay your brush down on its side, pivot the top. Kind of moving like you're moving around a clock. Okay, and then let's finish out with this last one here. And maybe, you know, just getting rid of a little bit of that water, that excess moisture. Now here I'm going to run into that leaf. So I might just do this with the point. And then from here, point, lay my brush down, turn the top like this, okay? Now that, I really didn't get that point in the right place. And you see how wonky that looks when you don't. That's why I always tell you, have your brush tip pointing towards the center. So let's do another one here. Let's use a little bit of purple. So I'm wondering, let's just try going this way. But I don't think that will work. But let's give it a try. Point, press. Yeah, not quite as circular. I have to go back in and kind of fill it in. So to me, I'd rather use the point of the brush, lay it down on its side and turn your wrist. So you're turning the top. This is gonna take some practice. I've been painting these for a few days and I've painted them in the past too. I'm gonna turn my page, pick up some more paint, scrape it on the side so I can get rid of that excess. And let's go in again. So point to the middle, lay my brush on its side, and pivot my hand like that. Now, I just got this umbre effect because what I did, if you can see that, I went into my purple, got rid of some of that water, and then I just took the tip of my brush, so I double loaded my brush a bit, and I'm going to set it in the center, keeping the tip, 
pointed towards the middle of the flower and bring my brush around, okay? There we go. Okay, so because I loaded the tip of my brush with this turquoise, it gave it that kind of ombre I call effect. So let's do a couple more of those. And honestly, practice lots of these. We also wanna practice our values in this so that we have these light values, darker values, which darker values just means more pigment than water. This was a lot more watered down, but we want that interest, okay? So let's try it again. The point of my brush, let me draw the center of the flower. And let's just go in. I will double load my brush again. So let's go into that purple. I just gently tap off and then load the tip of my brush with that blue. And that's just kind of for fun. Point, lay my brush down and turn my wrist clockwise. There you go. Let's do another one. Pick up the purple paint. Point, turning my wrist like that. Okay. And going to the next one. Just picking up a little bit more, kind of getting rid of some of that extra paint, tapping in with the tip. You don't have to do that double loading. Point, lay my brush down, turn my wrist, and then pick it up. So you want to go really slow is what I'm finding. Okay, because if you pick it up too short, you're going to miss part of this petal. So point, lay it down, and turn the top of the brush, rotate it around, and then let all the bristles come up. Okay, and there you go. Now, the other thing you're going to want to practice is a lot of these little petals, not the entire petal or flower is showing. I'm getting little half flowers showing, so you want to practice that. So you can use the tip of your brush and just go in and kind of Draw that in, and then just color it in. Because you want some peeking out, right? Maybe this one, using the side of my brush. Okay. Pick up a little blue, point in. Turn my wrist like that. So using the point and just kind of filling in. Okay, so we've got these ones peeking out. Here you could do point, lay my brush down, rotate my hand like that. So it is a little tricky, but you know what? Keep practicing this. And just, I can't tell you how important it is to go slow. Now, if I wanted to add in one more, just a peek at that next petal, I could do that. Just go really slow. So this will be part of the tutorial. And then we're going to, again, use different values. So this is a little darker value. This is a little darker value. If you want to play with this double loading your brush to get that ombre effect, do that. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and start our card, or if you're painting on your paper, that's fine. I've heard many of you are really enjoying that Artisto pad. Isn't it great? I'm going to just dip my brush. And now let's point, lay my brush down, and turn my whole hand. It's almost like the tip of my brush is stuck there. Point, lay my brush down, turn my wrist, and then come up really slowly. Okay, and as you can see, you might have to fill in a little. Wetting my brush a tiny bit, picking up that purple, and getting rid of a little bit of that water, just tapping off. And then you don't have to do the second part. I'm just dipping the tip into that blue. And here we go. Point, press and flatten out, and then pull my arm around and pick up your brush very slow. This is not a fast moving brush stroke. Point, lay it down, move around. And I might just say I'm not, when I'm turning my brush, I'm also kind of pulling it in that right hand direction. Now, if you're left-handed, that may be the opposite direction, okay? So let's go on to another, the next one. So I'm picking up that purple paint, tapping off some of that excess moisture. Let's go again right here, point, press, so I'm not just turning it clockwise, I'm pulling the whole brush. Point, press, and pull. Like that. And again, I'm some of these, I'm having to go in and create that petal. So this to me is I always had a hard time with hydrangeas. I don't know why they just have so many petals and it looked so confusing. So I actually found doing this was really relaxing and just worked for me. So point, now I'm pressing, flattening out my brush and I'm pulling, except for I'm keeping the tip of my brush anchored there, okay? Point, press. Now I'm running into this, so I'm just going to paint that in. There we go. I'm going to pick up some more purple, and I'm just going to do a little half one here because it's peeking out. So point, press until I get to this one. Then I'll kind of go around that. And this one I'll just draw on. Let's do one right here, point, press, pull into a semicircle or quarter circle, point, press, and drag around, there we go. Now I will have to, and Experiment with going both directions. I'm going this way and pulling to the right, but maybe pulling to the left is easier for you. Point, press. You're gonna find one side is easier for you. And then this one I'll just kind of draw in around this other petal, just like that. Now make sure you're not doing these if you're next to each other, make sure the one next to it is not wet because watercolor goes where water is. So if this one's wet and I'm going with wet here, it's just gonna turn into a big blob. So let's do another one here. Point, 
press and turn, pulling, and slowly picking up. Okay, point, press. Now I'm running into that, so I'm just going to fill in around that pedal. Point, press, same thing. I'm running into this one. And this one I'll just draw in. Now that is wet next to it, so I really have to kind of avoid that. There we go. Okay. Let's go right here. Point, press, draw around. There we go. And draw around that petal. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of blue. So I'll just tap my brush in some water. Ooh, that is a dark value. So I'm gonna add some water to that. Now that's fine, I added that much water, but I have to make sure I scrape off my brush so I don't get too much. I'm going to do one right here. Point, press, pull my hand around and slowly come up. Point, press, draw my hand around, keeping the tip of my brush pointed in. Let's do that one more time. Point, press, now I'm running into this flower, so I kind of have to go around that. And one more over here. So some of these you're just gonna have to kind of draw in and that's fine. Okay, look how pretty this is though. Let's do another one here. Point, press, pull my arm around but keeping the tip anchored in the middle of the flower. Again. Point, press. There we go. So pretty, right? Let's do one up here. Point, press, pull it around like that. Point, Press, pulling the top of the brush in a circle. And then maybe drawing in this last one. And we just keep going around the entire card like that. Playing with the values. Point, draw around. Keeping the center of your brush locked into the middle. Point, press, draw your brush up slowly. Uh, where'd it go? There it go. Point, press. Now see, I'm going the opposite way, so it feels a little different to me. And drawing in my last one. There we go. Isn't that beautiful though? Now I'm gonna use a little different value here. So this is very light to value. I'm going to do point, press. Now I didn't press all the way down because I wanted a little bit smaller value. Now see that puddle? Way too much water I've got. So just dab it off. You can soak some of that up. Your brush is pretty thirsty. And then go in again. And I will have to draw this one. There we go, just using that tip. And this is where playing with your values is really important because otherwise they're just all gonna look the same color and just look like one big flower. So, you want to have different values so you can see there's different flowers. 
Now, right here, I think I'll do a darker blue. So I'm going to, well, maybe we could use the full brush. Point, pull my brush in a circle like that. There you go. So I am drawing these in. There we go. Kind of peeking out there. Not pretty. So we just keep going. Going to put more water in so I get a lighter value. Scrape off my brush. See all that water that came off? And then let's go in here, point, pivot the top of the brush, and pick up slowly. Point, pivot, and pick up slowly. Point, pivot, and pick up slowly. And then this one you just have to kind of draw in. So I got these different values going on. Let's do another one here, and I think I'll use a little bit of purple for that one. So I'm picking up my purple paint, gently scraping it off, and then let's create one right here. Point, pivot the top of my brush, moving my hand, and then picking up the brush slowly. Another one, point, and just create that petal peeking out, just like that. Let's do another one right here using that purple, scraping, gently scraping off some of that water. And then let's make this one kind of peeking out point, move the top of my hand in a semicircle, just like that. Point, press, and then have to come in and just fill that in, and right here too. But it's just a little half moon shape, so those are pretty easy to draw in. And look at that. Isn't that lovely? Let's do another one right here. Point, press, using the top of my hand to turn. There we go. Just peeking out over there. Do one more here. I'm gonna mix a little bit of that purple and that blue. Scrape off the excess water. And let's see. Let's start here. Point, press. I'm using the top of my hand, moving my hand, and then lifting slowly up. Point, press and turn. Pick up slowly. And then just kind of draw in this last petal because it's peeking out. There we go. So pretty, I love that. I kind of want to go for a more roundish type of look. So I'm going to put another one right here, just as if I was rounding this out. So maybe drawing in. Now that's way too much water for me, so just dab it off. There we go. And another one here. There we go. So that kind of is rounding it out a little bit. If we need another one here, little half moon. And this tip of this brush is really great. Another one here. There we go. Maybe we want one here. Point. 
press, pull around, anchor that tip of the brush like that. Leaving white space between each petal. This one, just a little corner peeking out. Look at how pretty. So I'm gonna rinse my brush now. Wash it, rinse it. Now this one, I, I did full flowers, like a pattern, more of a pattern. This one, I did add some greenery in the bottom, which makes it kind of pretty, especially because purple and green go really well together. So we can certainly do that. And as you know, this dagger brush is literally paints leaves by itself. So let's go in and get some of that green paint. I always use my sap and my olive green. And we want to start lighter, scraping off a bit just to get rid of that excess. And then let's just create a leaf here. Maybe, let's see, how should we position this leaf? I think I wanna go like this. And now, just creating these big leaves that they have. Like that. And now maybe bring one coming out here. Let's see. Kind of playing with the side of this leaf just to get some different effects. Something like that. You can just really kind of fill in. Just kind of go around. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of yellow. So I'm gonna rinse my brush, pick up a little bit of my cad yellow here. and mix that in with some of the green that I have and just see what that does. I think the color I really would like is maybe a little bit of blue in there. So let's pick up some of this blue and add that in. And a lot of times when I mix my colors, I don't thoroughly mix them because I like um, the color to kind of not fully mix and to almost mix when it's on my palette. So I will leave it a little bit streaky. So we could add in some of that here, maybe. I think I like that better. Like that. Look how pretty that is. Now maybe we want to go a lighter value in the background. So I washed my brush, most of the paint off, and let's just create some lighter value green in the background. Something like that. So it looks like it's got a little bit of leaves in the background. Okay, so there you go. I think that's really lovely. I hope you give this a try. This one was probably the most challenging piece I've done with this dagger brush, but make sure you practice moving your wrist. So you're focusing on, let me show you that one more time. Because once you can get this brush stroke, you will this, it will make it all a lot easier. So let's make the circle in the middle. And 
you're keeping that point. That point of the brush is like anchored there. Point, lay your brush down, the back of your brush. Turn your hand, let your hand move. And then make sure you don't pick it up like with the brushes all out. Pick up the brushes slowly. Okay, do it again. Point, lay your brush down, but keep that point. Turn your wrist and pick up slowly. One more time. Oop. Point, lay it down, keeping that point. So that is really, you're going to have to practice that. And then pick up your brush. One more time. Point, pull your brush, and there you go. All right. Okay, well, thank you so much, everybody. Please give this a try. I will list this dagger brush. I like it a lot better, the Umbria. And um, I will list all my supplies. And thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks, everyone.